God, the most gracious God, we thank you for the day that you have made. For your word tells us to rejoice and be glad in it. So we've gathered together to lift up the name of Jesus. We ask that your presence would permeate the place where we are. That we may experience specialness from you on today. That we may experience your Holy Spirit. We thank you and we give your name praise, glory, and honor. Prepare us to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Good morning to all. Merry Christmas to all. This is a special day during this holiday season as this is the day after Christmas. How grateful are we for the birth of Jesus Christ? We celebrate his life, his birth, and his death as it assures us that we can have everlasting life if we accept him. Jesus truly is the meaning or the reason for the season. I received this Christmas prayer from a friend of mine who loves me and she shared this prayer with me. And I want to actually share this prayer with all of you as I love all of you, and I want to just let you all know how much I do. The name of this, of this prayer is a Christmas prayer. So I'm going to ask all of you to pray with me, close your eyes, and let's just go with this uh, short prayer. I said a Christmas prayer for you and ask the Lord above to fill your heart and bless your soul with the precious gift of love. I ask him for sincere love, the kind that's meant to stay, just like the generous love you give to those you touch each day. I pray for him from family and from every, every, cherished friend. <laughs> then I ask the Lord to give you his love that knows no end. Amen and ashe. We will now have our call to worship by Elder Jeffrey Wright. Thank you, Lord Bethel. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Your Lord is greatness, and the power of the glory, and the majestic, and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Thank you, Jeffrey. We will now have the hymn of praise by Reverend Gloria Smith.
Good morning, everyone. As we have just exited our Advent era, we are going to be moving into Kwanzaa. But before we do this, I would like to read two things to you. One was a card that was given to me by one of my customers, and it states, open your heart at Christmas, and not just for one day. Open your heart at Christmas. Let this beautiful feeling stay. For caring, generosity, and love, we treasure through the year. Don't wait until Christmas to share it with those you hold dear. The inspirational reading, I am the word that became flesh. I have always been and I will always be. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. As you think about me as a baby born in Bethlehem, do not lose sight of my divinity. This baby who grew up and became a man's savior is also God Almighty. It could not have been otherwise. My sacrificial life and death would have been insufficient if I were not God. So rejoice that the word who entered the world as a helpless infant is the same one who brought the world into existence. Though I was rich for your sake, I became poor, so that you might become rich. No Christmas present could ever compare with the treasure you have in me. I remove your sins as far as from the east is from the west, freeing you from all condemnation. I gift you with unimaginably glorious life that will never end. The best response to this astounding gift is to embrace it joyfully and gratefully. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have our words of assurance by Reverend Gloria Lyon Smith. Pardon. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own give presents to cheer and to God. God has forgiven us for our sins. Let us go and sin no more. You have been pardoned. Thank you, Reverend Gloria Smith. We will now have the opening prayer by Elder Jeffrey Wright. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we are all one in Christ, and we pray that as members of your body, your Holy Spirit will knit us together in the bonds of unity and love. Lord, we promise that you are the one that will build your church, and we ask that you would continue to equip each of us, both individually and cooperatively, with the talents and the gifts that may, that may be used to your honor, glory, and praise for the edification of the rest of the saints of God. Protect us from the wiles of the enemy who seeks to destroy and cause division amongst the body. Help us to be sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and gentle one towards each other. Let us not be motivated by selfishness, but in humility. May we seek to regard the needs and the necessities of others before our own. Give wisdom to the elders and the deacons, and give wisdom to those that teach, and a teachable spirit to those that listen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this special day throughout eternity. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Ashe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
We will now have a candlelight ceremony for Kwanzaa by Sister Elaine Lyon and Sister Velvet Anderson. Good morning. Good morning. Kwanzaa is a celebration of our cultural heritage. It commemorates the traditional values of our rich inheritance. It is a celebration of life. It is during this time that we pause to embrace seven principles represented by lighting seven candles for a period of seven days. Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday, but rather a cultural one with an inherent spiritual quality. The term is derived from the phrase Matunda de Kwanzaa, which means first fruits in Swahili. The seven principles called in Gaza Sabah are values of African culture which contribute to building and reinforcing the community among African Americans. The seven candles, Mashema Sabah, represents those principles which are, and I will include a spiritual, a biblical reference to each one of those. The first is Umoja, unity. First Peter third verse chapter. First Peter third chapter eight verse says. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Ujijakulia, self determination. James first chapter twelve verse says. Blessed is the one who perseveres under trial, because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love him. Ujima, Ujima, collective work and responsibility. First Corinthians says, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. Ujima means corporate economics, and Proverbs 19, chapter verse 17 says, one who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he will repay him for his good deeds. Inya, which means purpose, is uh, related to Jeremiah 32nd chapter, 9th verse, which says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Goomba, creativity, uh, Ephesians second chapter 10 verse says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good work, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Imani, faith, is represented in James second chapter 14 verse, which says, For as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without, without works is dead also. There are seven symbols for Kwanzaa, the Messiah, which means crops, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, Nkeka, which is the mat, Kanara, the candle holder, Muhindi, corn, Kikombe, Chapumoja, the unity cup, the Zawade, Zawade, gifts, and Mashuma, Sabah, represents the seven candles. And we would not have the lighting of the candles, even though the U.S. families will light each one separately on the seven days of Kwanzaa, today we will light all of them. The three red candles represent the struggles. We will not light the red candles. The three green candles represent the land and home for the future. <clears throat> the black candle represents the people of African descent. There are seven days of celebration in a community 
family, and culture to help African Americans reconnect with their African roots and rich, rich heritage. Happy Kwanzaa, everyone. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. We need to be reminded periodically of all these positive attributes. We will now have our instrumental selection by Brother David Shelton Cross. Peace is commonly used to mean a lack of conflict, 
and freedom from fear of violence between individuals or groups. Peace is the equilibrium that is sought that stabilizes the human condition. Now, under Roman rule, before the first century AD, the Jews found out they were subjected to a whole lot of fear, much violence and a lot of conflict. They were prime candidates for seeking a Messiah, and they were prime candidates for seeking peace. The prophecies of the Old Testament, they were well known, and the expectations were on edge for a savior, one who would protect the chosen people. To bring it up to date, the lighting of the National Christmas Tree in Washington, D.C. in 2005, the poetess Maya Angelou, and I'm sure most of you remember her, she reflected on what were the expectations of the Israelites. She had written a poem that inspired the peace and the promise of Christmas. Her words remind us of the goodness that the Christ came to share. And I would just like to share those words this morning with you that she, when she put pen to paper, she talked about these things and left these words for us to just meditate on for a while. Thunder rumbles in the mountain passes, and lightning rattles the eaves of our houses. Floodwaters await in our avenues. Snow falls upon snow, falls upon snow to avalanche over unprotected villages. The sky slips low and gray and threatening. We question ourselves, what have we done to so upfront nature? We interrogate and worry God. Are you there? Are you there really? Does the covenant you made with us still hold? Into this climate of fear and apprehension, Christmas enters. Streaming lights of joy, ringing bells of hope, and singing carols of forgiveness high up in the bright air. The world is encouraged to come away from rancor, come the way of friendship. It is the glad season. Thunder ebbs to silence and lightning sleeps quietly in the corner. Floodwaters recede into memory. Snow becomes a yielding cushion and aid us as we make our way to higher ground. Hope is born again in the faces of children. It rides on the shoulders of our aged as they walk into their sunsets. Hope spreads around the earth, brightening all things. Even hate, which crouches, breathing in a dark corridor. In our joy, we think we hear a whisper. At first, it's too soft and only half heard. We listen carefully as it gathers strength. We hear a sweetness. The word is peace. It's loud now, louder than the explosion of bombs. We tremble at the sound. We are thrilled by its presence. It is what we have hungered for, not just the absence of war, but true peace, harmony of spirit, comfort of courtesies, security for our beloveds and their beloveds. We clap hands and we welcome the peace of Christmas. We beckon this good season to wait a while with us. We Baptist and Buddhist, Methodist and Muslim say, come, peace, come and fill us in our world with your majesty. We, the Jew, the Catholic, and the Confucian, implore you to stay a while with us so that we may be learning of your shimmering light how to look beyond complexion and see community. It is Christmas time, a whole thing of hate time. On this platform of peace, we can create a language to translate ourselves to ourselves and to each other. At this holy instant, we celebrate the words of Jesus Christ. 
into the great religions of the world. We jubilate the precious and then the trust. We shout with glorious tongues, the coming of hope. All the earth's tribes loosen their voices to celebrate the promise of peace. We, angels and mortals, believers and non-believers, we look heavenward and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at our world and speak the word aloud, peace. We look at each other, then into ourselves. And we say without shyness or apology or hesitation, peace, my brother, peace, my sister, peace, my soul. Yes, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Dr. Dowell. That was wonderful. You, you have always come with such insightful and meaningful information to us, and I really, really do appreciate that. We will now have a scripture reading by Brother James Howard. Good morning, Beth. Today's scripture reading comes from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Honey, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your lions burnt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching therefore with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in bonds, but therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. May the Lord have a blessing through his words. Amen. 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 And thank you, Brother Howard. We will now have a sermonic solo by our Reverend Tanae Howard.
over other men. So when the righteous remain silent, all hell can break loose. King Solomon said in his Proverbs, we must stand up for what is right. Yeah. Not by man's standards, but by God's standards. When we don't stand up against evil, it grows, it germinates, putting off shoots and taking root and developing into newness and new wrongs and new wickednesses, profoundly immoral deeds. Stand up! Stand up, I tell you, for Jesus. Soldiers of the cross, stand firm and pursue God's stamp of approval, God's mark of acceptance. Revelation 13 and 18 and 27 and 27 says, You see, God has indeed divinely fingerprinted every individual who has or will exist. And within that knowledge, he also knows those who are his. Those who will stand firm for him. And he knows those who will not to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Exodus 8, 16, 20 says, of the finger of God as well as his finger writing the Ten Commandments on tablets of stone that were brought down from biblical Mount Sinai by Moses and to enable us to stand firm. Jesus declared that we are to be the salt of the earth, salt preserved, Salt enhances. Spiritual salt represents. It represents permanence and loyalty and durability and fidelity, usefulness, value and purification. These are sure qualities that ensures standing power. When Jesus gave his sermon on the mount and said, you are the salt of the earth, he meant that the common people he was addressing, the fishermen and shepherds and laborers were wise yeah. and virtuous. Isn't it good to know that we are worthy in the sight of God? Yes. Yes. Jesus was alluding not to the tang of salt, but to its value. We are valuable to God. Yes. And we must declare whose side it is that we are really on. Yes. Then we must choose ye this day whom we shall serve. We cannot serve two masters yes. or stand for God. We must stand for God. We must take a bold, courageous stand for God. Yes. Stand up! For those who are in Christ, respect yourself and then ignite the divine sparks in you. Assess your powers through the power source God Almighty Himself with the declaration that kindness is universal and is one way, that's one way to stand up firm for Jesus. Sometimes being kind allows others to see the goodness in humanity through you. So always be kinder than necessary, according to German Kent. You see, our freedoms are vanishing because our leaders are getting active enough to take a firm stand against all that is wrong. Nowadays, they are perpetrating and instigating while they have the opportunity to stand firm, they don't. They don't stand against gun violence, the insurrections of voter rights, suppression and endangerment and jeopardy of freedoms and liberties. All of this are taking on a brazen and bold and shameless and frank flagrant approach even to man's inhumanity towards other men. The power of humanity. The power of humanity is the strength of individual commitment and the force of collective action. Both must be mobilized to relieve suffering to ensure respect for human dignity and ultimately 
giving a hug or sharing and showing love along with being an active listener. All are good examples of humanity. You see, we must take firm stands as related to civil and equal rights. You know, you know those, those, those personal rights that are supposed to be guaranteed and protected by the United States Constitution and federal laws enacted by Congress. Yeah, those rights that are supposed to include protection from unlawful discriminating, yeah. discrimination. Those rights that are supposed to include people's physical and mental integrity. Supposed to include their life and safety. Those rights that are supposed to grant equal opportunities as related to employment, education, housing, and voting, regardless of race, religion, sex, or national origin. We gotta say something. We gotta do something when these rights are threatened and in serious and immediate danger of violating. What can we do? We can take a firm stand, speak up and speak out. And we must always pray. Scriptures tell us that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And we must speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and the needy. Now in our text today, we find that in this Christian life, we fight against principalities and powers. That is the powerful evil forces of fallen angels headed by Satan. We see it every day. We hear it in the news every day. Satan is a vicious fighter. And just like lions attack sick, young, weak, or struggling animals, they choose victims who are alone or not alert. That's why people want us to watch out for Satan. When we are suffering or persecuted, if we are feeling alone, weak, or helpless, and when we are feeling cut off from other believers, or if you are so focused on your troubles that you forget to watch for danger, those are the times when you are especially vulnerable to Satan's attacks. During times of suffering, Seek other Christians for support. Yes, yes, yes. Keep your eyes on Christ and resist the devil. And according to James 4 and 7, he will flee from you. To withstand the attacks of Satan, we must depend on God's strength and use every piece of his armor to remain undamaged. The body of Christ needs to be armed yeah. and dangerous for Jesus. And as you do battle against the rulers of the darkness of this world, fight! Yes. Fight in the strength of the church whose power comes from the Holy Spirit. These who are not flesh and blood are demons and over whom Satan has control. They are not mere fantasies. They are real, very real. We face a powerful army whose goal is to defeat Christ's church. When we believe in Christ and join his church, these beings become our enemies. And they try every device to turn us away from Christ and back to sin. Although we are sure of victory, we must engage in the struggle until Jesus comes back. Yeah. Because Satan is constantly battling against all who are on the Lord's side. We need supernatural power to defeat him. And God has provided that in his Holy Spirit within us and his armor surrounding us. Yeah. If you feel discouraged, remember Jesus' words to Peter. As he said, upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build a church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. As the body of Christ, we must realize that God's church proves to be more powerful 
that hell, yes. that it is victorious. We are engaged in a spiritual battle, and all of us believers find ourselves subject to Satan's attacks because we are no longer on Satan's side. Yes. So Paul tells us to use every piece of God's army, armor to resist Satan's attacks yes. and to stand true to God yes. in the midst of those attacks. Stand in the belt, which represents truth. Yeah. You see, Satan fights with lies. And sometimes his lies sound like truth. Mm -hmm. But only believers have God's truth, yeah. which can defeat Satan's lies. Yeah. Then there's the breastplate, representing righteousness. Uh -huh. Stand firm and refuse to waver in your faith. Satan often attacks our hearts. So we must put on that blessed breastplate of righteousness, which is the very seat of our emotions, self-worth, and trust. God's righteousness, God's righteousness, God's righteousness is the breastplate that protects our heart and ensures his approval. He approves of us because he loves us. And he loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us. And there is no greater love. The shoes, in other words, the readiness to spread the good news. Satan wants us to think that telling others the good news is a worthless and hopeless task. But the size of the task is too big. That it's too big and that the negative responses are too much to handle. But the shoes God gives us are the motivation to continue to proclaim the true peace that is available in God. This is good news. This is good news. News that everybody needs. The shield of faith, what we see of Satan's attacks in the form of insults and setbacks and temptations. But the shield of faith protects us from Satan's fiery arrows, his darts. With God's perspective, we can see beyond our circumstances and know that ultimate victory is ours. The helmet of salvation, the helmet of salvation. Satan wants to make us doubt God. He wants us to make us doubt Jesus. He wants us to make us doubt our salvation. But the helmet protects our mind from doubting God's saving work for us. Yeah, yeah. Then there's a sword. The word of God, the sword is the only weapon of offense in this list of armor. There are times when we need to take the offense against Satan. When we are tempted, we need to trust in the truth of God's word. When we stand, we maintain our position. When we stand, we endure. When we stand, we can see the salvation of the Lord. God's word is eternal. His word is unfailing. Even though our lives don't. Public opinion changes and is unreliable. But God's word is constant. Only in God's eternal word will we find lasting solutions to our problems and needs. So stand on God's word. Stand on his purpose for your life. When we stand, we stand in God's grace. Yes. When we stand in the faith that is the gospel that brings salvation, faith is the gospel that brings that salvation. Yes. When we stand in love, love can lift you yes. and sustain you and prop you up on every leaning side. It can keep you up. And according to Coretta Scott King, Love is such a powerful force. It's there for everyone to embrace. That kind of unconditional love for all humankind. That is the kind of love that impels people to go into the community and try to change conditions for others. To take risks. 
John 15 reminds us to stand for holiness and stand for righteousness. As believers, we must stand up for God's truth. Stand for godliness. Stand for justice. Stand for goodness. Stand for mercy. Stand for peace. Stand on the promises of God. Lean and depend upon his word. If you trust and never doubt, Jesus will surely bring you out. Stand on the promises of God. Stand to murderers. Stop killing. Stand to rapists. Stop raping. Stand to robbers. Stop stealing. Stand until Jesus comes back to claim his right. To claim his church. Without spot or wrinkle, be ready. When he calls, yes, Jesus is standing at the door, knocking. Hear him declare, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, if any man hear my voice, if any
that you will be able to stand firm. And so if there's one on today that would like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we ask that you would say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Lord, I give myself away. I give my all to you. Accept him as your Savior. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you on today for your word that encourages us to stand firm, to be faithful in our witness and in our walk. And so at this time, Lord, if there's one that doesn't know you, we pray, oh God, that you would touch their heart, that they may surrender themselves to you, to accept you as Lord and Savior, that they would decrease and that you would increase in their life, that their heart may open to you. We thank you. We give your name praise. We know you can do these things. We are hard as hard. We know, oh God, that you can make it fertile ground. And so we give it all to you on today. We thank you. In the wondrous name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen.
moment to moment and moment to movement spiritual circle. Please join Reverend Marion German and Sonia Johnson in an upcoming movement from promoting self-love. Topics of discussion on all levels and concerns will be discussed. This circle of sisterhood is a vital arm of our women's ministry, which provides a sacred space to explore and celebrate the divine feminine. It helps, it offers help, hope, and support for each other. Sharing, listening to, and embracing the cares and concerns of others. Sister to sister, here we'll enter the spiritual jump zone while fellowshipping yet, disconnected from the business of the external world. All interested women who would like to become a part of this circle of sisters are encouraged to contact Reverend Marion German at 404-272-1511 to enroll. Our initial meeting will convene immediately following our worship service on Sunday, January the 9th, 2022. You won't have to miss this opportunity to release and be loosed. Reverend Smith is available for counsel, prayer, visitations, directions, and or whatever the needs may arise relative to all parishioners. You are welcome to call Reverend Smith at 770-713-9192 or 908-380-6152 to arrange for your personal meeting, either in person, by way of Zoom, or by phone. Your concerns are of interest and importance to Reverend Smith. Join us every Wednesday by way of Zoom. The link is below. For Bible study at 7 p.m. and followed by prayer service at 8 p.m. Take the time to be re reju rejuvenated and revived through God's word and worship. Intercessory prayer. Please join us Thursday from 7.30 to 8 o'clock p.m. Please note that this Zoom information remains the same every Thursday. Please plan to log into Zoom by 7.25 and please feel free to invite someone. To connect to Zoom, the information is right there if you want to go by telephone. What does the African American church look like after the COVID-19 pandemic? Check out our website and our Facebook uh, on the, 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 um, uh, the, the uh, information is on your, is on your uh, program. Visit our website to listen to sermons delivered by our pastor, Reverend Gloria Lyle Smith. Don't forget to invite a friend to celebrate Christ with us. The church is now open to worship in person. Join us for meet and greet at our coffee hour following morning worship today. Announcements, all announcements to be included in the Sunday bulletin should be submitted no later than 12 noon every Wednesday. Please email all announcements to Reverend Tanae Howard and, and there is her email address. Please keep those on our prayer list in your prayers. We will now have our prayer list by Reverend Marcus 